First question came from my guy Caleb. He said, Engraven, this is Caleb. I remember sending a question for subs last year when the Ravens were going to play the Patriots. I was mentioning how the Ravens and Pats game was going to be my first Ravens game. Uh, well, Engraven, my parents surprised me with Baltimore Ravens divisional round playoff tickets. The last time I was at a Ravens game, Lamar Jackson dropped a Jackson 5, and I'm excited to see these boys in person, a.k.a. the number one seed in the AFC. Oh, Caleb, congrats to you. Going to that divisional game should be – it's going to be crazy there. It's going to be really, really, really crazy there. So I'm glad you're getting to go and have a lot of fun for yourself, for your family, for all of us here too. A team keep it clean. He said, wish me luck because it's going to be very cold. Oof. That's, that's, that's the nasty part right there. But the game, I'm sure you'll heat up from doing all, all the yelling and screaming and all that. He said, the first thing I would like to say is a statement. I think many of us Ravens fans need to apologize to Todd Munkin. Many Ravens fans were upset at the fact that we didn't wait for Eric Bieniemy to try and sign him for the OC job. Now we have one of the best offenses in the league under Todd Munkin. He has done a phenomenal job with Lamar Jackson, and I'm excited to see where this team goes. Well, I, I wouldn't even say necessarily to need to apologize. Well, anybody that disrespected Todd Munkin would need to apologize to him. But I know I was somebody. I, I wanted the Ravens to go after Eric Bieniemy. Uh, but when they decided to go with Todd Munkin, I wasn't like, oh, man, I hate this. This sucks. This guy's going to be terrible. Da -da -da -da. No, I was like, all right. Let's get it. I hope that he does well. Because sometimes there will be people that if their prediction or their assumption or what they think is going to happen doesn't end up happening, then they hope that everything burns down. And we've seen that with some Baltimore Ravens fans and whatnot. They'll be like, all right, if what I think is going to happen and it didn't happen, all right, well, I want whatever it is to just fail. No, that, that ain't the case. We still want this team to succeed. We want them to have the ultimate success, and that's obviously reaching the Super Bowl. So while I was definitely somebody that wanted Eric B. I mean, I was just thinking about this the other day, um, especially with everything going on with the commanders, and who knows where he's going to end up. He'll probably end up somewhere else. But I remember thinking, because my reasoning for wanting Eric B. Enemy, I'm like, man, this, this dude, he coached an offense that is uh, multiple Time Super Bowl champions. Why would I not want that? And looking at how the, uh, the 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 Kansas City Chiefs offense operated, I'm like, oh yeah, they they use so many different guys in different ways. They got all this, they create all this diversion and whatnot. They they just do such an excellent job. And I mean, now you see Eric Bieniemy is gone. Kansas City Chiefs, they, they just doesn't seem to be the same. Is it the pass catchers of the offense itself? Hey, who knows? But either way, uh, that's who I had wanted. But when they hired Todd Munkin, I was like, okay. Let's, let's learn about Todd Monken. Let's see what Todd Monken got in store and hope that uh, this is a hire that just goes off and that it is the right decision. Um, so I'm glad that everything really ended up working out for the Baltimore Ravens when it comes to Todd Monken because, yeah, the offense is one of the best, and they are really starting to really hit their stride too. Not in this last Steelers game. I mean, that was, you know, count there. But before then, they really started to hit their stride. And even when they're not in full units, and even when stuff is not clicking all the way, they've still been putting up over 30 points. So coupling that with this defense, it should help take them a very, very long way. He also said, my question is, what do you think – this team needs to do to make sure they make it to the Super Bowl. I understand 2019 is behind us, but what can we emphasize to make sure something like that doesn't happen again? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, just staying focused and, and knowing exactly what, what's right in front of you. And I, I think that they really do. I think this team has a different uh, level of maturity on it. Um, they have uh, a lot of experience uh, from a lot of different places, from a lot of different players. Um, but just stay in the course, just really staying focused and, and really knowing that, hey, this is it. Th this is it. Like, this team is going to be much different next year. The coaching staff could be much different next year. Uh, the players who are here it could be much, and it will be much different uh, next year. Um, so capitalize. Capitalize on everything that's right in front of you. Yeah, you know that you you can handle your business. Handle your business uh, make sure that you realize the importance of everything that's right that's right there in front of you. You've made it this far, and you've earned the right to have the bye week and whatnot. You've earned the right to have this week off. Uh, but like they said, they, they said they're going to still be focused, still be all taking care of business in the bye week. Um, so it's important that they just remain, that they stay laser focused, and they have, like Mark Andrews said about Lamar Jackson earlier this season, they have elite focus. Next question came from my guy, Javo. He said, uh, when do you see Dalvin Cook playing? Did you think that he was going to play in the preseason? I mean, excuse me. <laughs> I'm tripping. I'm on my fault. Did you think he was going to play in that Week 18 game against the Pittsburgh Steelers? I, I didn't think he was going to play in that game. It was, it was just so soon. It was like he had just got signed, and then the game was on Saturday. It was just extremely soon. Um, but, yeah, playoff time. Like, he'll have two weeks 
two and a half weeks, I think, to really ramp up with the playbook and everything, really good, acclimated and everything. So he got some time. Um, so, yeah, I think he will be active for the first playoff game. I don't think he's going to be out there like that, like that. But I do think he will be active for it, for sure. Uh, he said, I really feel like this is all year, especially with so many upcoming free agents. So my next question is, am I getting too excited or should I just take things game by game? See, this is always funny um, because I've I, I seen a lot of Ravens fans. That, like when I talk about, oh, yeah, I, I think Ravens winning the Super Bowl this year. Um, I even uh, last night, well, last night from when I'm recording this, uh, Michigan, they won – they won the uh, the national championship, college football. Uh, so I had tweeted. I was like, man, what what a year for, for Drew. And he's a Ravens fan who's also a Michigan fan. I'm like, what a year for him. Uh, he is getting to see his college team win a national championship. And he's going to get to see uh, his NFL team, the Ravens, win the Super Bowl. Wow, what a, what a great year. So some people are like, oh, man, no, no, relax. Or one, two people. One person was like, oh, relax. Uh, we, we need to take it one game at a time. And I'm thinking like. We not playing. Ravens fans can say whatever they want to say. They feel like the team is going to win a Super Bowl. They can say that. That's fine. It has no impact, no bearing on what happens on the field. And somebody else was like, oh, well, I can't believe Ravens fans are saying they're going to win a Super Bowl. Uh, if, if they lose in the division round, then they're going to be depressed. Yeah, they would be upset. They would be very upset if they lost in the division round. I don't expect them to. I don't expect them to lose it all for the rest of the year. But if they did, yeah, we would be upset. But my point is the, the players, they're the ones that got to stay focused. They're the ones that's playing. We can focus on whatever we want to. We could think about next year. We could think about the draft. We could think about free agency. We could think about so many different things But because we're not the ones playing. Money over rings. Next question came from my guy, Michael. He said, good morning and happy new year to you and your fam. Congratulations, congratulations on the fourth player in your household. <laughs> LOL. Just want to ask you a question. Appreciate that, by the way. Thank you. I want to ask you a question. Uh, if you were up for a big contract like Queen uh, and Matabike, would you sacrifice the money for a chance to stay in Baltimore to possibly win chips and know a good team? Mm. Well, that's a personal question. Um, probably not. Maybe it would all just it would all depend on what offers I was getting from other places. Now, if there were other places that were just extremely dysfunctional, it was so much turnover, it was just a bad situation, and there was no chance at all, um, it, it would just all depend. It would all, it would all depend. And it would all, all depend on how much money I was leaving on the table um, versus what, like, how much money I was leaving on the table with Baltimore versus signing elsewhere and getting more money so it would all just depend on the situation but i i, I never will fault a player for because i know some people be like oh man that player now he's going to a sucky team okay that player's getting paid let him get his bread <laughs> like let, let, let him get his money i never fault a player for getting their money because the nfl stands for not for long it, it is not for long at all if you have a career more than a year oh man you're fortunate if you have a career more than three years wow you really like you really got to be considered fortunate for sure. Uh, and then if it goes on beyond that, oh, man, if you get a second contract, whether big, small, you get a second. That's crazy, man, because, again, there's so much turnover. Like, I was thinking about this the other day. Like, there's a draft every year. Every year there's a draft. And there are 32 players. There's seven rounds, and there are 32 players in every single round. What, what, what is 32 times seven? 32 times seven is... 224 so that's 224 people going to different teams going to new teams and then there's free agency free agency be going crazy then there's undrafted rookie free agents so there, there's so much turnover in the nfl so if you can last that's what i say if you can last a year great if you can last two great if you can last three years it, it, it's just crazy so get your money Motivation. Next question came from T.I. No, it came from my guy Oreo Cookie. He said, I ain't graven hope you will. As we know, the Ravens got to buy in our resting Lamar, which is the right decision. There's a fear of rust, which is fine here. Uh, and that is where I think we are fine. All you need is motivation and being locked in. I have now lost 80 pounds. Wow. You ain't playing, man. Hey, we happy for you. Like you, you are going hard, man. That's what's up. I've now lost 80 pounds, which is a small step, but we are getting there. 2019 team was immature and looking ahead. You heard Lamar say they are not going to make that same mistakes. Sorry, here comes a question. How worried are you about rest? Because me, personally, I'm a little worried a bit. Uh, not too much, though. We're getting that Lombardi, though. Go Ravens. I, I ain't worried. I, I'd much rather rest over um, the possible risk of them getting hurt in a meaningless 
game. Um, and I'm not really worried about it. Uh, they are professionals. They got experience. They got a lot of different guys who done been there, done that. So they know that what they need to do to get the job done. The Ravens draft picks. Next question came from Mar. He said, Raven, what's up? I was watching the Alabama bowl game and I haven't seen much, but uh, Jace McClellan looks legit in that game and he's projected sixth or seventh round. So I was thinking we could draft him and maybe the fifth to seventh and get a steal to replace Gus. He's 5'11", 213. So him and Keaton would be a one-two threat, I feel. What do you think? Much love to you and the fam, and stay safe. And he said, P.S., first time emailing you, but I've been watching the vid since, tw the vid since 20, 21. I appreciate that, uh, Mari. Thank you, man. Um, I don't know. I, I haven't looked at him or really anybody at all. Um, I did watch the, the national championship, though. I did watch the majority of that. So I, feel, I was like, okay, these are these guys that all these people we talk about. But anyway, um, just thinking about possibly replacing Gus. I, I wonder how that will be because, yeah, he, I believe he is a free agent. After this year, I wonder if they um they offer him something. I could see them doing that because Gus is a he just such a Baltimore Raven. Like he's one of those guys that you just don't envision going somewhere else. But again, business is business, so we'll see how it shakes out. No, there's been a lot of talk from people since Derrick Henry's gonna be leaving the Titans. There's been a lot of talk of the possibility of having him. Uh, especially because the Baltimore Ravens were so close to trading for him um at the trade deadline. But that not happening ended up working out for the Ravens and for Keith Mitchell really allowed, allowed him to show his stuff. Um then oh man that sucks what happened to man just man we we could have had Keith Mitchell too. We could have had Keith but anyway. And even JK Dobbins. Like thinking about running back like oh we've been through so much at running back year after year after year. But um I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. I, I can't answer this like, oh, yeah, for sure. I was because I don't know about him yet, but I'm sure <laughs> come draft time, because a lot of draft heads out there and the draft nerds out there, they will let me know. Next question came from Dakari. He said, Ain't Graven, hope all is well with you and your family. I want to say I really appreciate your page. Being a Ravens fan my whole life, it helps to see someone else love the Ravens as much as I do. I got two questions if you don't mind. I, I appreciate that, Dakari. I said, well, Number one, if Lamar wins his second MVP and gets the Super Bowl ring this year, will he be considered a Hall of Famer? Yeah. Yeah, he, I, he did got to. If he gets all of that, like, that would be crazy. In, what, six years? That would be insane. So, yeah. Uh, he said, there have only been uh, a few people who have gotten two or more MVPs, and all of them are in the Hall of Fame or soon to be. Personally, I think after his unanimous MVP, he should have already been in the Hall of Fame since there has only been one other player to do that, that being Tom Brady. Uh, with his next question, he said, which team are you most worried about? Facing in the playoffs Personally I would say the Browns I believe the Browns have the only defense Who is fast and quick enough to keep Lamar Keep up with Lamar Jackson's speed Also although we have home field advantage Let's not forget the Browns have a quarterback Who has won a Super Bowl with the Ravens That being Joe Flacco Which means he surely won't be scared To come into Baltimore Since it's practically a home for him Flacco also doesn't have much to lose Also the Browns are one of the two teams Who beat the Ravens in Baltimore I feel with a team who has already seen us play twice uh, A quarterback who is familiar with this territory And really has nothing to lose in a defense Defense like the Browns defense this could potentially be a game we lose I'm also worried about the Bills Josh Allen has been to Arrowhead multiple times and beaten the Chiefs who in my opinion have one of the loudest if not the loudest stadium in NFL I fear our crowd noise won't stop Josh Allen from balling out no not doubting the Ravens just a thought All right, sorry for the long question don't apologize for that now um with Joe Flacco and the Browns like if, if we do end up playing the Browns in a divisional round we will have played three completely different Browns teams uh, one will be against DTR. Well, actually, yeah, one will be against DTR. Uh, Dorian Thompson, Dorian Thomas Robinson. I forgot the DTR, the quarterback, but he got hurt. Then the next one was against Deshaun Watson, where this dude was hurt, had a little rough, kind of rough first half, but then in the second half, he literally didn't miss a pass. He went, he was like 100% completion percentage, touchdown. They end up winning the game. Um, and then it will be Flacco. Uh, so it'll be complete, three completely different Browns teams with different quarterbacks. Um, and now, now with that, the Browns, yeah, they, they definitely obviously pose a, a threat against the Baltimore Ravens. Their defense uh, is nice. The defense is like that, but so is ours. Um, and the Ravens, they weren't clicking all the way back then. Their offense wasn't rolling all the way like it's been rolling more recently. Now, again, credit to Browns defense because they've been doing their thing, but then – Ravens put up over 30 points in that game, I, I, I believe. Let me just look it up real quick to see how many, uh, how many points the, the, the Ravens put up in that game. Yeah, they put, they put up 31 points. Now, the offense put up 24 because, remember, first play of the game, Kyle Hamilton with his pick six on uh, Deshaun Watson, which was nice. Um, 
But with that, uh, my thing is the the Ravens like, and they had a lot of miscues in that game. They were just they were a little sloppy in that game. There was a pick six. There were, there was some drops. There was just a little bit of everything. And again, credit to the Browns defense for causing all of that stuff to happen. Um, but even with that, yeah. I, which team? Oh, back to your question. Which team am I worried about facing in the playoffs? I'll be worried about facing every team because it's playoffs. And you got to bring your A++++ game because you can't get away with bringing anything less. Uh, but I do believe the Baltimore Ravens can beat and will beat anybody who they face uh, in these playoffs. Now, with the Browns, with Joe Flacco, yeah, he is Baltimore Ravens Super Bowl champion with the Baltimore Ravens. Got plenty of experience there. Um, and, yeah, like you mentioned, he got nothing to lose. Joe Flacco is playing with nothing to lose because – even from when he first signed on with the Browns, he had nothing to lose because he was like, oh, I'm their fourth quarterback. All right, I got signed to the practice squad. Okay. Oh, they called me up for a game. All right, whatever. I just got there to have some fun. And he went out there and just he'd been winning ever since. Um, but with Joe Flacco, one thing about him is, why well, Joe Flacco, he, he'll run a little bit, take off, but Ravens pass rush should be able to get to him. They, they should be able to get to him um, because they have a lot more speed than Joe Flacco does. Now, Flacco got that on, man. So it would have to be a game where the safeties, they stay ready so they ain't got to get ready. So they will be backed up. I know they will blitz Joe Flacco like crazy, though. But uh, Amari Cooper, they will have to be watching him. Um, and just, yeah, but I think pass rush would be big in that game because you can keep getting to Joe Flacco. That can make a big difference. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, and you also mentioned the Bills. You mentioned that the Bills, you feel like Josh Allen with the crowd noise, they wouldn't be able to stop Josh Allen from balling. Josh Allen, he is a baller. He is a baller. He's somebody else that turned. He, he, he could score a lot of touchdowns and whatnot. He could throw for a lot of yards and all that. He turns the ball over a lot, too. So, but he, he's another one. Just like Joe Flacco, like I feel like they are not similar, but kind of similar. Not in their styles, but with what they do. They put up a lot of yards through the air. They'll throw for a good amount of touchdowns, but they're also – Throw them picks uh, They also turn that ball over So they'll give you an opportunity man um, But they can make all them throws too So they're, they're tough Everybody, Every team presents their own challenges And uh, what they're good at What they struggle with um, So whoever we play like It's, it's going to be a tough game in my opinion Whoever we play Because it's playoffs And these teams made the playoffs for a reason So it's up to Baltimore Ravens to show like Hey, we the number one seed for a reason Next question came from my guy BB He said, do you think Lamar Jackson's performance Was quarterbacky enough for him to get the respect he deserves LOL, MVP, AFC Division And Conference Champions uh, I would hope so But again, like we say He'll get his credit. There'll be some people that change their tune on Lamar Jackson, but there'll be others that no matter what he does, he won't ever get it. Next question came from my guy, Michael C. He said, Angraven, hope you and the family are doing well, and congratulations on the new member of your family. Appreciate that. He said, my girl is pregnant with twins. Oh, oh, y'all knocked two kids out and one. Okay, congratulations to you. He said, it will be my first and second child. A little nervous, but... I'm extremely happy, as, as you should be, man. Congrats to you, man. That, that, that should be fun. Uh, and he said, I'm just hoping for the best of health, and I hope the same for you, and that's all that matters. That, that's true, Mike. You ain't lying, man. I appreciate you. He said, I had a question for you, and that was a lot with all the free agents uh, that we're going to lose this offseason. Uh, from the wideout, or the wideouts to linebackers, the offensive line from free agents to guys that are going to be retiring as well, how do you feel if the next three years will be rebuild seasons or at least – uh, one as long as we win the Super Bowl Would you take that trade off? Yeah I would Yeah I, I would take that all day But see The thing is Say for instance Ravens win the Super Bowl this year And then they got a lot of guys Who would be leaving Because again you They already got a lot of good players That are getting ready to be free agents But then they add a Super Bowl to their resume Oh that gets them that much more money On the market That makes them that much more marketable So um the Ravens will lose a lot of guys, and they still have a lot of guys, too. They still got a lot of their guys locked up. But think about this. Like, Lamar, the Ravens have Lamar Jackson. They got Lamar Jackson. They always got a chance. Always got a chance. They would have uh, Zay Flowers. They have Mark Andrews. They have Isaiah Likely. Uh, we'll see what happens with Rashad Bateman. We'll see what happens with Odell Beckham Jr. Um, but they will have uh, Kyle Hamilton. They'll have Roquan Smith. They'll have Marlon Humphrey. Uh, Marcus Williams, we'll see. I expect him to probably be here but we had a conversation later uh they have brandon stevens 
So they have well, Matter BK free agents. So we'll see. But th- my point is, they got a lot of guys. Even with everybody who will be leaving, and everybody who does end up leaving, well, they got Michael Pierce. They have Travis Jones. Um, but even with everybody that's that will be leaving, they'll still have a lot of core guys that can make some stuff happen. So I don't even think it would be a rebuild. But if they did win a Super Bowl, uh, yeah, I would take a rebuild. But we have Lamar Jackson, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, he said, I've been having this argument or debate with some of my friends, and they are not willing to do that. But knowing how the Ravens drafted the trades that we could work out in our salary cap situation, I think if we can win the Super Bowl this year, I'm willing to take a complete L next season. I wanted to hear your thoughts. Yeah, again, you wouldn't even have to worry about that. Because, you again, with, with what you have in place, you don't have to worry about a rebuild, in my opinion. And he said, and by the way, I've been watching the video since 2019, and it finally hit me who your doppelganger is. Reno Wilson, LOL, have a happy new year, and I'll watch you on Sunday, team, keep it clean. That's not the guy from Reno 911, is is it? I, I, let me look up Reno Wilson. Oh, please don't let it be. Oh, oh, that guy from, uh, okay. <laughs> that guy from um, Mike and Molly. I love that show, Mike and Molly. Oh, I, I, I watched that all every season. I watched every episode, loved it. Um, but, okay, this guy, okay. I I, I mean, I see it a little, a little bit. Um. I think it's just uh, black dudes with a low cut. Maybe that's what you see. Next question came from my guy, Jalen. He said, what's up, Engraving? Blessings to you, your family, and team. Keep it clean. I know it's a bit early for this conversation, but I can't help but to think of how big an offseason EDC has ahead of him. He has the task of trying to retain Mike McDonald, who is more than worthy of a head coach position. He also has to try to re-sign key role players that drove their price tag up this season or find players that can replace their production. And that goes without mentioning arguably the biggest part, the draft. EDC has done a great job drafting, but now that Lamar has signed his new contract, he is going to have to start drafting guys that can have an impact on a team earlier on in their careers would love to hear your thoughts hashtag team keep it clean yeah Jalen, it is true he got a lot of work ahead of him but hey he, he took on his gm role for a reason so now it's time to see it's, it's really time to see um because yeah it's so much like especially this off season like this off season coming up last off season was probably the uh the biggest off season uh for eric DaCosta, in my opinion it was the biggest off season in his short tenor as Ravens GM, uh, but now this off season uh, will be the second biggest. And, and speaking of Eric DaCosta, this next question came from my guy four one zero Byron. He said EDC for GM of the year. What's going on, Engraving? It's been years since I emailed you about a question from subs. I hope all is well with the family and the dogs. Hey, appreciate that, man. Uh, shout out to Carter for not only becoming a big bro soon, but for taking one for the team by allowing you to make that Dalvin Cook video before you took him to the park. LOL. Hey, appreciate that, man. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to show him this. He said, uh, I made a list of notable transactions and accomplishments that EDC has done uh, in all of 2023 to obtain this Super Bowl caliber roster. It may take you a while so you can read the notes or read the ones that interest you, but here it goes. Oof. Oh, that is a lot. He said on January 11th, he did the extension with Roquan Smith on March 10th, restructured Michael Pierce's contract, and now, um, just a couple days ago, signed him to an extension. Uh, March 13th, re- released Calais Campbell. Uh, March 14th, initially signed Trayvon Mullen. Uh, then March 15th, traded Chuck Clark to the Jets. Uh, then re-signed Justice Hill, re-signed Geno Stone, re-signed Nelson Aguilar, signed Odell Beckham Jr. Those were four huge moves that made such a big difference. Huge moves. Uh, he talked about uh, signing Tyler Huntley, drafting Zay Flowers, drafting Trenton Simpson. Now, Zay Flowers, obviously, huge impact. Trenton Simpson, not so much, but we see in that Steelers game, we saw what he could do. Uh, then he traded, um, drafted Andrew Voorhees, so we'll see about him in the future. Declined Patrick Queen's fifth-year option. We'll see what happens with him. Signed Rock Yassine, extended uh, Lamar Jackson, signed Arthur Millette. That that was big too. Sign Ronald Darby. That was big too. Uh, Sign Jadavian Clowney. That was huge. Sign uh, Keaton Mitchell and Malik Ham. They made the initial roster. Obviously, significant moves too. Uh, restructured Marlon Humphrey. Sign Calvin Noy. Sign Malik Cunningham. Uh, clinched the number one seed. Designated Ardarius Washington. Returned from IR. Then just recently signed Dalvin Cook to the practice squad. So the 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 thing the thing with EDC is that we can all see it don't stop. It doesn't stop. And in my opinion, that's how a good GM should be. It shouldn't stop. It should never stop. You should never be content. You should never feel like, oh, yeah, we're good enough. We, we, we don't need to get better. No. You should always feel like and always be looking for ways to make your team even better, even stronger, even though the Ravens number one seed. 
Number one seed. They still mess around and sign, sign Dalvin, Dalvin Cook. Even being the number one seed. Like, that that was great, man. Even they were doing great, and they were trying to get Derrick Henry. They were still trying. Like, so I, I, I've loved that about the Baltimore Ravens this year, that they have continuously tried to get even better. And he said, and the story continues. With that being said, do you agree that the GM of the year should easily go to Eric DeCosta for how he constructed this roster? About making sure that every dollar counts. A year ago, the fan base was divided, but now we're reunited, and, <laughs> and it's because of him. Like OBJ said, a day before we, Lamar agreed to the contract on Twitter, it's time to book him. Flights to BWI next February, and Ravens flock. He said, "Let's fly to MNT to celebrate this parade." I love it, and yeah, EDC for GM of the year. Um, at least in Ravens fans' hearts. At least to us, he's GM of the year, for sure. I mean, and then you you also got to think about, too, um, how the roster was constructed, but everybody that they lost along the way because they lost a lot of people. They missed a lot of people along the way, but um, – and, and they've had some people that's come back. A lot of people have come back. Some people are done for the year. Um, but the depth, the, the depth, it, it says a lot about the depth and how these Baltimore Ravens have continued to have success despite – this guy being out, that guy being out, that guy being injured, that guy being out for the season, that guy missing a month, that guy, like, they've continued to have success despite all that. So that says a whole lot about the depth that you have on your team.